Hello everybody, Stuart from Super Machine here. Today I wanted to make a quick video about the Super Machine API and how you can access it. I get a couple of support requests regarding the API and I think because it works slightly differently in the fact that it's sort of an async API, which means that you send the request, you specify where you want the response, and then the response will be sent to that webhook. It's a little bit more complicated to set up. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the API documentation that we have for Supermachine. I'll also link that below this video. I'll then go into Postman, where I'll build out the API and show you how you can export the curl or export the API request in whatever language you want to then also show you how to set up a webhook to receive the response. Because I think that is the part where people are having troubles because there's you know, two parts to this, sending the request successfully and then receiving the image back from the request successfully. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at the documentation and let's see how this is all going to work. So we have in our knowledge base, this section on using the API. In the section, we go over the introduction, how to access it, the specific parameters that you can use, and the available models that you can put into the API. So if I go through each individual part of this, you'll see that we have the introduction to the API. We say with the API, you can create images, you can set a prompt, negative prompt, certain settings, and then you can get your image. We also go over the fact that the API is an async API, which means that you are sending a request and then you are going to receive, receive something back. Now, you're probably wondering, why have we done it like this? Why haven't we just done it? So you send a request, you get the image back, and it's all in the one sort of thing. The answer is, we have our own GPU cluster. We're not sure on how the queue is going to look at any one time. So when somebody sends a request, it adds it to the queue. The queue then goes through uh, in sort of chronological order and runs through the uh, requests in the queue. And then once a request is done, it will send back from our system. So this is how Super Machine works in general. So this is the same system that we have within Super Machine. It's just in API form for you to use to use those images in your own systems uh, when using it programmatically. So our API is designed to be user friendly. We try to keep it up to date with the models that we introduce and we have this section to sort of go over everything that you can do with the API. So how do I access the API? So to generate an API key, you need to log into your account, click on the profile icon, look for the generate API key and you will see an API key for generation. You need to be on a plan that enables the API to be able to generate an API key within your account. When you click the button, you will see if an API key generates or not. And if it doesn't, then you're not on the right plan and you will need to upgrade. Um, obviously don't share your API key anywhere when you have created it, because if somebody has that API key, then they can use it and uh, use all of your credits and you don't want that. So keep it secure but we do have a way within the system to regenerate an API key. So what I'll be doing in this demo is I'll be generating one, I'll be using that for the video, and then after the video is done, I'll be regenerating it to make a new one because I don't want anyone watching this video to rinse my account of all the credits that I have. So then we have a fully working curl request here and I'll show you what I can do with this um, when I show you Postman in a minute. And we'll just go through the next section. So we have the parameters. So we go through what you can put within the request. So we can input our own prompt. We can input our own guidance. So, and there's a, a bit of a description about all of these. The aspect ratio, you can see here that we want a value of square, tall, portrait, or landscape. So it has to be one of these values. The webhook, so this is where the completed image will be sent to. The negative prompt, this is where you put in things that you don't want to see within your image. So if you're looking for photorealistic, you might put like anime, bad fingers, blah, 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 blah. Um, and the model. And the model is uh, 
which model you want to use. So we have like Super Machine Reality, we have a bunch of other ones. And you can see within the final section of this using the API, we have the list of all of the uh, models that you can use and the slugs. So below is the list of models with their corresponding slugs. So what we need to do is we need to copy the slug of the model that we want to use. Uh, include the model slug in the model field and that will work. So that's going over the documentation. Let's now have a look at our My Super Machine account and let's generate an API key to show you how easy that is to do. So I've logged in to my Super Machine account and if I click on the profile icon in the top right, I can then hit profile. From here, you'll see API key. If you don't have a box, it's probably because you haven't generated one before. So there will be a generate API key or generate API token button here. So what I want to do is if I want to see it, I can hit the I. If I want to copy it, I can just click click here and I'll see an alert saying it's been copied for me. And if I want to change this, I can hit regenerate and it changes to something new. So this is how we can keep it secure because obviously we don't want people to have problems with leaks or security of their API key. So if you feel that one has been exposed, like I'm doing deliberately in this video, I can just regenerate it to make myself a new one. So now I have my API key copied to my clipboard. I am ready to go with what I need to do to get a request done within Postman. So let's jump into Postman and show you how simple it would be to get this request up and running. So I've come back to this accessing the Super Machine API page because I thought it would be useful for me to literally show you everything. So here you can see a fully working curl request. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm gonna hit copy and then I am going to open up Postman. Now Postman is a tool that lets you sort of test API requests. So it lets you send, get, post, put, patch, whatever you want requests, and you can see all of the parameters that you want. It's a really good tool just for testing things. And because we already have the curl request from the page, what I can do is I can hit this import button here and I can just paste the curl in here. And you'll see that it's added the request here. So I can see that there is X API key field and I can see that there is a bunch of fields here. So the first thing that I need to do now that I've pasted this request in is I need to change this API key for the one that I have in my account. So I'm just doing this on a different tab. I'm just copying my API key from the profile like I showed before, and I'm just gonna paste that in. So we paste that in there. And then what I can do is I can look to change any of the settings that I want here. Obviously, for this demonstration, there's nothing I really need to change except the webhook. So the webhook is what's going to mean that we can get the image. So, for example, if I send this request now with this test.d, it's probably going to go through and you'll see with it being sent, we have a 200 okay. So it's gone through okay. It's processing equals true. The remaining credits is this much and the return URL is this. So it's showing you details about the request, but obviously we don't have an image. So to get the image, we need to have set up the webhook correctly. And this is where I think a lot of people are having issues with this API. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a NAN, but the process should be pretty similar regardless if you're using Zapier, Make, Pably, any tool that lets you create a webhook to start off a workflow, any of these sort of no code API connector tools will work the same sort of way. So I'm just gonna use NAN because it's my tool of choice. I think it's the most flexible, the most advanced, gives you the best options, but 
the process is pretty similar across all of them. So let's dive into that in a, another tab in just a moment. This is my NAN account. All I've done is I've logged in and I've selected new workflow. So the first step of a new workflow, I need to add a webhook. So the webhook will be the trigger of what I want to do. And the only thing that we need to make sure is that we are taking a post webhook. So it needs to be a post webhook. And NAN allow, allows me to give the path, but a lot of, of automation tools like Make, Zapier, etc., will just give you a string like this. So this is what we are looking for. This is what we want to copy in the return URL field within this API request. I'm just going to change the path to super machine demo api just for this don't want any authentication and the response doesn't really matter immediately is fine on this because basically what we're doing is we're getting the information in so from here i can then go back to my api request and i can add this in so just to show you everything i'm taking out this test.d I am putting in this super machine demo API. And I guess one other thing to note regard regarding all of this is sometimes when you are building out an API, you will be asked to put a content type in the header. If you need to put one regarding your super machine API, use the multi-part form data. So content type, multi-part form data. Um, but generally that should be sort of it creates it automatically within within Postman when you have the body like this. So that's just sort of going off on a tangent. But you see here, now I've put this webhook within the webhook field. Everything else remains the same. So I'm expecting now when I hit send on this, as long as my NAN process is set to, because obviously we're using the test webhook, it needs to be running. So it's listening for the webhook. If it's not listening for a response then you're not going to get anything through so it needs to be active i know zapier make you need to sort of run it to listen so this is the part where you'd want to do that so let's have a look at that so i'm going to press send in the next step but i'm not going to be on this tab so i'm going to be on my browser just to sort of show you what happens within the browser but all I'm going to be doing outside of the browser is hitting this send button. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. I'm just going to save this workflow just so I can then hit this test workflow button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit test workflow. It will see that it's waiting for the trigger. And now we are going to hit send on Postman. So this has now sent a request on and I'm expecting, you know, what's happened is our request in Postman has sent it to the queue. The queue is then working its way through. And as the queue finishes, like it has already, you'll see that I've received something within this webhook, which is great. This is what we want to happen. So if I come into here now, you'll see that the JSON response, the body, I have an image. So I could then go to another tab and I could open up this image. So if I then do this, okay, sure. I have this image of a cat on a mat. So this is perfect. This is just what I want. And with this process, we would then be able to set up something with this automation, right? So we have this image now. If we just do a test again, just to run it for again. I'm going to hit send in Postman to send the request for again. And I'm going to then get the image once it hits the front of the queue and it does the generation. So I'm expecting that to come through any second and it does. And then what I can do is, you know, NN works pretty similarly to make that you can add different nodes. What I could do is I could say, okay, send it to Discord, send it to Google Sheets, add it to a task, do whatever I want with it. Asana, Slack, Notion, you know, you, you can send it wherever you want. And the way that you would need to map it is, so if I wanted to send a message, for example, with Discord, I'd have to hook up all this stuff. But you'll see here, we have our input, we have this body image. So the body image, we could just drag across and it's going to send that across. 
So this is how we can go from having the webhook to then making that webhook into something that we can use within a workflow. So it's whether we want to send all these images to Google Sheets or do what we want to do with them. I think one thing to note with the the way that we've set up the uh, Super Machine API is that we are not keeping the images indefinitely within storage. So once you do have them and once you do know what you want to do with those images, you will need to save them to your own storage, whether that's Google Drive, whether that is S3, um, et cetera, et cetera. It's just something that we made to make it so it remains like a lean thing and because we expect that people using the API will be using it more heavily than people using the board and the main sort of web app product. So that's just something to keep in mind. You will need to keep the storage in mind when you are doing this. So we do have them on a link so you can see them and there's enough time to do what you want to do with them, but they will not be staying on that link indefinitely. So if you are going to be storing the raw links, then do not be surprised when they disappear over a bit of time. So I hope that helps to give you a bit of a better understanding about the API. It's not too scary. It's not too complicated to set up. I guess the, the final part that I want to show you is actually doing the export of the curl from Postman because I think this is really, really something to do as well. So back in Postman, just to show you how you can export this request because a lot of tools now will have an import curl function. So the import curl function can be utilized by after you have finished testing what you need to test within postman you can click here to get the code snippet by clicking here we get a working curl request so i can copy this and i would be able to put this into my tool of choice if i want to get any other language say i'm using javascript or anything else then i can do so and it will just modify it to work the way that it needs to work. So there we have it, a brief introduction to the Super Machine API. It's super easy to use, it's super simple, using a webhook to then further the workflow once you get the image is possible in a bunch of different tools. You can use Make, you can use Zapier, you can use Pavli, you can use whatever, NAN, etc., etc. And once you have done this, then you can build out some things which are really quite complicated. I guess the main thing to note is this is an async API. So there are two processes. You send a request and then you wait for the response. Secondly, you get your API key from your super machine dashboard. If you think that your API key has been compromised, then you can regenerate a new one, which will make the old one invalid. For the sake of making this video, I have already changed the API key in my account. So anyone who tries to use it will just encounter an error. Um, the final thing to know is that we like to take suggestions on how to improve the API in the future. And what we want to do is we pretty much want to bring the API in line with the web application product. So everything that is possible on the web app will eventually be possible on the API. That's something that we are striving towards and it's something that is coming. So I hope this video has been useful. If you're interested in using our API, consider signing up at supermachine.art and we'd love to support you in your endeavors with generating awesome images with artificial intelligence. Thank you.